One of the hardest things for a fitness professional or somebody who's just into exercise and health is to watch a friend or family member slowly decline into poor health. What do you do? How do you help them? They won't take your advice. They feel like you're condescending. And yet here you are watching them descend into terrible health. Well, in today's episode, we talk about strategies that we found that actually work. So if you have a loved one, a friend, a family member, a spouse, a kid, a parent, somebody you care about, who you want to get fit and healthy, watch this episode. We're going to give you the playbook. So great that you wanted to go this way today because last night I had the NCI call with all the coaches and trainers. Uh, one of the one of the trainers uh, gets on there and asks a question, and she's a <laughs> former Orange Theory uh, trainer and is now privately training and listen has listened to the mm. show for for quite some time now and is like learned that 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 was the reason why she was plateauing and having all these issues and she now traditionally weight trains has changed her life she's all happy well she has a sister who is i think five years younger than she is and uh she's still like hardcore addicted to orange theory and so her question to me was like mm. how do, and now this isn't obviously convincing someone to get into fitness yeah. but it's similar still to, hard yeah because now and she's like how do i convince her that this isn't the best way to train. So like what you want to talk about today is probably like right in line with what I had to communicate to her, because I think people are looking for like this, you know, how do you close them or this yeah. powerful statement that you say, that's just going to convince them to I do have it. all the answers for them. How can I convey this and have it stick and have the change them basically. What's up everybody. Uh, since there's only one day left for the 50% off sale on maps, anabolic advance, I'm going to give one away for free. So here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If you do all of those things, and if we think your comment's the best, we'll let you know in the comment section that you got free access to MAPS Anabolic Advanced. Now, everybody else, it's still 50% off. You have one day left to take advantage. So if you want to, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. This has to be, <clears throat> this is one of the most common questions that we get. And it's also, of all the questions we get, I think I can confidently say, this is also the hardest. Yes. This is one of the most, <clears throat> of all the things you ever attempt to do uh, as somebody who's, uh, you know, created a good lifestyle around health and fitness. This has to be the most challenging for two reasons. One, you're watching someone you care about. And, and you have the answers, or at least you feel like you have the answers. And you probably do have the answers. Uh, good health does solve a lot of things. And you're watching them, and they're getting worse, and they're getting sicker. Sometimes it's crazy obvious. Sometimes it's like, my dad had a heart attack. Or, oh my gosh, uh, they just added another medication to my friend. Or I have a child, and they're depressed. And I know why they're depressed. They're not moving. They're not exercising. Uh, it's their diet. It's it's how they're eating. Or, or a friend and you may be losing a uh, connection with the friend because you're moving in the direction of better health and they refuse. And so now it's hard for yeah. you to connect with them because they want to do things that maybe aren't so healthy anymore. So it's really hard. And then convincing them to move over, first off, it immediately can come across as, a, or, or feel like a trigger. I mean, go up to a family member who's obese and then tell them, hey, you know, you probably should start working out. Immediately they're like, oh, it's because I'm fat. Yeah. Oh man, that is like, you're hitting just me defenses right. Defenses are up like right away. Yeah. It's like, oh, and you think you're so great and you're just talking about me because I don't look good and that's making me feel super terrible and negative. So that alone, just that right there uh, makes it so hard. I made this connection pretty early in my career and I think it's because of the the background that I had as a kid. Um, you know, if you've listened to the show long enough, you've heard me talk about, uh, I grew up in the <laughs> church, lots of different churches. Um, and you know, as a young kid, the, one of the things that they, you know, prophesize to you is just the importance of evangelizing and going out there and converting mm -hmm. other people. Right. Yeah. And I remember hearing so much of that as a kid and then like getting a little bit older and then watching my parents and then watching how people in, within the community did that. And I was just like, God, it's such a turnoff. And I was friends with people. And I'd hear people talk about them after they leave. It's like, oh, and like right away bash them and oh, they're hypocritical. And it's just mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. man, that is such an unsuccessful way to convert these people over into your beliefs by coming over and basically shaming them or making them feel like they don't have something and you have it. And it's like, it's such a terrible 
way to do that. And I realized that like, man, the, the, the best way to do something like that is to be this example or live this life, uh, in a, in a, a manner that is so attractive that people want to ask you. And then you have the opportunity to say, Oh, well I do this and this and that. And that's why I, that, and it's the same thing. It yeah, really is a hundred percent. And I, just to back up a little bit, you have to, if it's really important to you, okay. If it's really important to you that you get your family member or friend or spouse, um, or parent, to start exercising and start making positive changes with their diet, let's say. Um, if that's really important to you, then you have to ask yourself this question right here because this is all that matters, okay? <clears throat> how can I be effective? Not how can I be right, okay? There's a difference. That's like when you have an argument with someone. I can be right, so you can get an argument with your wife or your husband, and you can be right and then be pissed and hate each other. Yeah, great. And still, not, get, and still not get through. Yeah, it. nice. Now you got to live together. What are you going to do with that, right? <laughs> or you could be effective, how can I be effective? That's what you have to think to yourself. Now, what is effective? Effective for somebody who's doing nothing really in the direction of good health or really isn't placing any effort or energy into it. Effective is a step, is a single step. So ask yourself that and then also realize that it's often a long game. It's almost never. In fact, I'm trying to think right now. Have you guys ever had one conversation where you brought it up and immediately converted somebody? No. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> no. Never it's happened. a long game. So, so I've even never, if you did, it was very short lived. No, I right. Just, like so, you can convince somebody with a shock and awe tactic, and I know that you know some marketing, and you know there's some effective ways to do it, but it never lasts. No. Yeah, or guilt them or shame them. Right. Yes. I mean, yeah, you could do that, but it it, it does. It never it never lasts. The best. I mean, I've thought about this before too. Like, what would I do? <laughs> If all of a sudden, like my wife fell way off and like just all of a sudden Katrina is no longer working out, she puts on 50, 60 pounds and just all of a sudden doesn't care. Now, obviously I know as a trainer and coach and like that there's probably something else that's really going on that's causing that, but how would I motivate her to get back into it so that it wouldn't be me telling her anything. I would, I would then put the responsibility and even though I consider myself healthy and fit right now. I would double and triple down in that category. Like I would want her to see me making sacrifices and the effort to go. Right. Even, and, and so she could see that through me in, and, and met, let that be the thing that she's attracted to, to bring her that direction, or at least get her to ask the right questions versus me stand, even being where I'm at now, Oh, I'm pretty healthy and fit. And Oh, she's going way off the deep end. So I'll hear, I'm going to sit here and, 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 preach to her, tell her or berate her. Yeah. Or berate her or shame her. It's like, no, that's not the move. The move still is like, okay, like there's lots of areas in my life in the, in the health sphere that I can be better. Totally. So I'm going to, I'm going to be even better than what I am now and let her see that drive in me to be that better version of myself and hope it bleeds over into her. Yeah. The two challenges that are going to come up if you don't do this right, or even if you do it right, that might happen or you're going to come across as a know-it-all and for those of us in the health and fitness space, we know that this is common. Like you'll get the eye roll, like, okay, like, yeah, right. Like exercise is going to help my anxiety. Yeah, right. Like you'll say things and they'll ask you questions and you'll tell them how improved health basically improves everything. But to that person who's never experienced it, you just come across as a, a know-it-all. The other one, and this is a big one is, and this is the the halo effect or the like perfect, you know, angel fallacy or whatever, is that. Oftentimes what they'll do is they'll point out your imperfections or how easy it is for you to do this. So, oh yeah, well, yeah, you work out all the time. Mm -hmm. You don't have the three kids or you don't have a back injury or you've never had to deal with what I deal with or you've, have you seen my work schedule? So these are your challenges. Now what you're saying, Adam, about be the example, the reason why that's the first most important one is that's the most effective one. There's nothing more effective. If you want to evangelize. You got to model it. You have to model it, and then it has to be that person's idea. They, if they come to you, if you're if you're the example, okay, if you're just living it, and the person notices you're in a good mood, you look good, yeah, energy, good up. energy, yeah, like holy cow, like, and they know, then they notice your structure. Wow, we go out to eat, and you don't make a big deal about it. So here's here's the be the example part. We're at dinner, and I'm not talking about why I'm not eating these things. Oh, that it's got a lot of sugar and you know, gluten can be inflammatory and I don't like processed yeah, foods. Yeah. No, no, no. It's literally like, no, thank you. I don't want that. No, thanks. I'm not, I'm not into that. Well, why don't you want it? I just, I just don't want, like you don't make a big deal about it. you be the example. If that, if it works, what'll happen is the person will ask you, then it becomes their idea. Like, Hey, you know, I noticed that you, 
you like you turn this other all these foods down like are, like are you like obsessive you're like actually no it's I kind of don't want them. Yeah, you know? I know how it makes me feel. Yeah, mm -hmm. what do you mean? Oh, I, well, it made me feel like this, and eventually I just don't want it anymore. Or man, I noticed, like, holy cow, like, you know, we were at the beach and we were pulling those those you know coolers <coughs> on the beach, and like everybody was huffing and puffing, and you were just, that's crazy. Like, yeah, no, it's uh, you know, I, I, I thankfully I work out, and it, it allows me to have that kind of stamina or whatever. So you can, if it come becomes from them, it's their idea, and it's not you preaching down to them. And this is just historically the best way to evangelize is to be around these people and be the example of what it is. And remember the example is not pushy, preachy, or shameful. It's calm, it's relaxed, and it's confident. It's calm, relaxed, and confident. Now think to yourself the times you might have been evangelized into doing something new, and it probably was your idea. You probably went up to the person and said, hey, how do you how do you do that thing? Or I noticed something, yeah. you know, and it's because they they were living or being in a particular way that made you feel like there was something uh, to it. So, by the way, nothing we're going to say is a guarantee. Uh, all of everything we're going right. to say still might not work, yeah. but it's your best chances. That's that's basically well, what we're saying. You're, you're trying to close your family member on your ideas and your philosophy, right? So there, this, there, there is a close that's happening here. And I always talk about how, you know, there's a difference between a good closer and a great closer. And a good closer can, you know, overcome the objections, push somebody, <laughs> shame somebody, guilt somebody into making the purchase or, or making that choice. But they always end up regretting it or give up on it or don't do it when you do that versus somebody who knows how to pull somebody into a sale or pull somebody into your ideas. Or lead them into it. Yeah, yeah, and that's what that is. Pull or lead, that's the same thing. That's what you're doing by leading by example and looking for them. And then and I just think that all of us, everybody, even these fitness fanatics, have an area in, in the health and fitness sphere that you can be better. And so, if, and you focus on Jordan Peterson talks about all this, like, like cleaning your own room, right? Mm -hmm. Before you go out there and tell everybody else about what they could be doing better, it's like, well, one of the best things that you can do to get them to do that is actually to do more of that in your life. Yeah. Otherwise, what they all do is that what happens and you don't see it because they don't do it to your face. They wait till you walk away and they go like, yeah, I saw what he did yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah, saw yeah. what, you know. He had I, a drink. Yeah, I saw, he still drinks and does yeah. that. Or I see the way he treats his yeah. wife. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't, if that's what a fit guy looks like or acts like, I'd rather be fat and take care of my, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. so they will pick you apart. And so you better, if you're going to come at somebody and be preaching, you better fucking have all your ducks in a row because mm -hmm. they'll right away. That's what they're going to see. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the sooner you come to the realization that you can't control anything other than yourself and your own behavior, your own actions, um, the better off you're going to be. And really, like that's it's it's just our natural tendencies. You want to help, and you want to you look at somebody as uh, potentially like I have all this knowledge, I have all this wisdom to to pass on to them, and I really want to. You get excited about it, especially when it's a new thing. Definitely too. when it's new, and so like it's it's that whole kind of like conundrum because you, you're you're experiencing it. It's real time. It's your your body's changing. You have all this new energy and life, uh, and you just want to just give it away and like like pass it on to everybody. But uh, that's really where you need to just keep living it, keep uh, focusing on what you're doing specifically. And to Adam's point, keep doing it, at, you know, at a higher level because at that point, it's it's contagious. Yeah, yeah it, you you hit why I think it's one of the most challenging things, and this is where why I was even challenged when I first started is because you're excited. Yeah, like a lot you want to preach off the the, the rooftop. Yeah, you want to tell everybody because it, it and because it, it radically changed your life. Which, by the way, yeah. is very similar to somebody who finds God. You know yeah, what I'm saying? They, they, yeah, they, yeah. they they were they were they were completely parallel. Right, right. They're at that, they yeah. were at the bottom of the barrel. Life was terrible for them. They find religion. Religion completely turns their life around and has done so much for them. And then they just they feel so compelled to share and tell everybody. It's just a terrible strategy if if their desired outcome is to convert more people. The same thing goes for somebody who has been radically changed by health and fitness. You you become a trainer or you you change your 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 way you eat and the way you exercise and it's radically changed you and you think going out and sharing that with everybody else is going to convert them over to doing it and it just is not The two happen. most important parts about this are one uh, realize that you're not going to be 100% in, in the sense that you're not going to convince everybody. So it's still it's still going to be hard no matter what. So realize that because what can happen is you could be like, well, I am being the example. It's not working. So I'm now I'm going to resort to pushing them, shaming them or whatever. No, no, you just lowered your odds. Mm -hmm. So number one, it doesn't work on everybody. 
no matter what, they have to be ready for it. Uh, but it's the most effective. It's the most effective. And number two, here's the most important thing about being an example. Be calm, confident, and relaxed in it. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about it. Don't preach it. Don't talk about your choices. No. Don't make a big deal about it when it's pointed out to you. I remember when I finally figured this, because I was the guy that would try to sell everybody. I mean, I went to my parents' house, went through their <laughs> cupboards, threw stuff away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, tried to shame my own parents, you know, <laughs> didn't work. Like, uh, I did this for a long time. And I remember when I first figured this out, I went somewhere with a bunch of friends and family members. And it was, a we were at a park and then we all had our tank tops on and then, you know, shirts off and we're playing. And I started getting comments. And I remember I was very calm about it, real relaxed. I kind of brushed things off and people were saying things like, man, you look good. Oh, wow. What's going on? You got all this energy. Like how, you know, what's going on? And I would just say, you know, oh yeah, well, you know, uh, you know, I train and, you know, oh, thanks. I appreciate that. And I would take it as a compliment. I was very calm about it. By the end of the day, I had a few people come up to me and be like, hey, if, if what kind of workout should I do? Or they came and asked me, had I gone and preached to other people, Yeah, 100% would have turned uh, everybody off. Now, the next point, this is a, a another very effective strategy. I've used this before with family members in particular. This one takes a little more time, but if you really care about somebody, this one could be super, super valuable, is to invite them to come work out with you. Now, I want to be very clear. The goal is not to train them and the goal is not to, you know, show them a great workout or whatever. The goal is to give them a good experience. That's it. End of story. Yeah. These are your friends. These are your family members. You love them. They probably like hanging out with you. Obviously, you got a good relationship with them. So when they come to work out with you and you don't have to present it as a workout, you can literally say, hey, do you want to take this class with me? Hey, do you want to go on a hike with me? Hey, I want to do this. I like to do this thing at the park that I do. You want to come around and hang out, whatever. And then the goal is not to give them a crazy workout. They're going to, that's going to happen or they're going to exercise. They're going to move. The goal is to make it a fun, great experience. Cause what you're doing, what you're doing in a kind of sideways kind of way is you're building a positive relationship with exercise <clears throat> and it starts with the experience. It does not start with the soreness, the sweat, the sweat and the challenge. Everybody thinks it's the soreness and the, like, oh, my, my dad finally came to a workout. I'm going to show him what it's like to have a hard workout. What you're going to do by doing that is guarantee he'll never want to come back, especially yeah. after he feels the way he feels the next couple of days. But if he shows up and you're hanging out, you're having a great conversation, you do a couple movements, he makes some comments on it, you're chill about it, super calm, you do your little thing, you hang out, and he gets this really good experience, they'll probably come to the next one, the next one, and then they'll start to say, huh, I like the way I feel. This is kind of cool. Maybe I could do some of this uh, on my own. Well, thinking about the steps that I would take, again, using the analogy, if uh, Katrina had put on all this crazy weight and I'm trying to figure out, you know, how do I get her back to pursuing her health and fitness, right? The first step, obviously, is to, <coughs> to be the example, right? To double, triple down on bettering myself and letting her see that. And then the next thing is, I, as I'm making those choices, is inviting her you know, and, and making no big deal about it. Like, Hey, today I'm going to go to the gym at two. Did you want to go with me and just ask? That's it. And yeah. you, you do, if you do, you do, if you don't, you don't. That's and, a, that's also it. Don't and, make yeah, it feel stupid. It's not a big deal. And, and just, and if I'm, if I'm consistently thinking about cleaning my own room and, and getting my stuff better and better and better, and just subtly inviting her to make those choices with me and not making a big deal about it. If she does or she doesn't, that I guarantee like that, that's enough right there. That will start to most people, right? There's always going to be things like you said, there's going to be people that just don't give a fuck. Like yeah. you can't do anything about yeah, yeah. that. And it's not, and it's not your, it's not for you to try and convince that person yeah. that's on them. But I mean, if I'm, if I'm strategically doing this with somebody I love, this is what it looks like. It's me first dial, keep dialing in. And then every opportunity when I can invite her to join me in these choices, I invite and I don't make a big deal about it. If she says, no, it's no big deal. Yeah. Let them ask the questions when you're there too. I love it. Just invite them along with you. Uh, what should we do? Like that, that's a, a great place to start is like, you know, waiting for them to kind of, you know, ask you those specific questions. So then you can, so it's going to be hard to, to not keep going and keep adding detail and then get hyped up. Up, uh, as well to the earlier point it's like once once you kind of open that door too like you don't want to turn it into a mona v presentation and you have a captive <laughs> audience and you're like Great hammering reference. them with all these uh these facts and, and and your knowledge so 
Um, that, that again, that's, I just remember that as a new trainer as well, too. I get excited once somebody starts to kind of get a little bit of a gleam of like, I'm, I'm, uh, buying into, to all of this. It's, it's like, okay, just stay calm and, and just allow things to progress at, at the pace that they're going to, yeah, this well, was the only thing that worked for me with my parents was this part too. Cause yeah. I was always the example in the sense that I've been working <clears> out and doing that stuff forever. But you know, when it's your kid and oh, that's his thing, right? That's kind of what it became. Oh, this is. Sal's thing and he's a little weird because he won't eat the pasta that I made because it's got this or whatever. Hmm. But uh, but this set the one that we're talking about now is the only one that worked because my parents want to hang out with their kid. I know this, I'm a parent. If my kid yeah. grew up, you know, yeah. as they become teenagers, especially in, in their 20s, like getting your kid to hang out with you is kind of hard. <clears throat> so if my kid invited me, hmm. hey dad, you want to come uh hang out with me and play video? I don't know, something I don't normally do. I'm gonna be like, Yeah, sure, because I just want to hang out with you. This is the only thing that worked with my parents is I would invite them to do something like, I'd tell my dad, hey, you want to go do the sauna? And then maybe we'll do some stretches together. Or, hey, mom, let's go on a walk together. And they're like more than happy. And I'm not even talking about the workout. I'm not even saying to them, oh, this do this step here, do that. We're having fun conversation. And, and as I've done this a few times, they start to get that, oh, I like doing this type of thing. And now my mom walks all the time. Now my dad is been going to the gym a little bit, inquired about a trainer. I was able to hire a trainer uh, for him. This step is the only thing that worked for me with my parents. Oh, well, I want to add to a point that you made that I think is really important and something that I, maybe I would have made a mistake or did make mistakes when I was a younger trainer and the older, wiser trainer would do it different, which is if Katrina says does come, right? I, I, I've invited her. It's the ninth time. And she finally goes, yeah, you know what? I do want to come with you. And then she comes. I actually am going to dramatically scale my workout back. Yeah. yeah like totally. I actually want to make it and instead of the young ego driven trainer of like trying to in, show impress her you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or show her how much I know or show her how strong I am and like probably defeat her. I'm actually going to go the whole opposite direction and kind of to your point of I'm more focused on the experience and enjoying it together. I don't care if we did one exercise. You know what I'm saying? That we just went to the gym, maybe we walked on the treadmill, and maybe we spent the whole time foam rolling and getting ready to squat and doing a few sets of squat and talking. And having about, good conversation. Yeah, just yeah. and that's it. Like, and really and then and let her go like, that's it. That's how we're doing it. Like, honey, that's all we need to do. Like, we haven't been here in a while. That's already we're moving in the right directions. And like that way she's not fucked up the next day. The yeah. next day she will feel anything that deterrent. she does. Yeah. Because it's new. She hasn't done it in months or potentially years, whoever we're talking about. So I know any sort of movement in this direction is going to make her feel it. And so I don't want, what I don't want is her to wake up and feel crippled and not want yeah. to work out the next By the day. way, this, this one we're talking about, <clears throat> inviting them, is the most effective one for spouses because it's a date. And that's how you would present it, by the way. Hey, honey, Friday afternoon, what are you doing? Hey, I found this really cool uh, hike that I like to go on. Or, hey, I'd like to uh, go to the gym and do this like new meditative class. Or let's hang out together and then let's go get lunch. And it is. It's all about uh, the experience and about the relationship. And then they enjoy it. it has that. And by the way, here's the other thing that can happen if you, go to the, if you go to the gym and then you try to show off and show them how fit and tough you are. Even if they don't do it and they don't get sore, all it does is make them feel even more out of shape. Yeah, it makes them makes feel, them feel far, far, so far away. Than. Yes. Yeah. It makes them feel so separate. Yeah. It makes them feel like, oh my God, there's my husband. Yeah. And look at me and look what he can do. And he's totally into this. And we're here, but we're not really here together. Yeah. In fact, we came yeah. here together. Yeah. And now I feel more separate than ever. Yeah. And I'm never going to come back I here. I don't know if we'll ever get to that level. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. All right. The next one, this one is extremely important because if you don't do this, 100%. The person is going to look at you and come up with every reason why you can do this and they can't. And that is to validate them. Validate them. So if they tell you and you're having this conversation and you're the example and they ask you questions and, you, and they say, well, how many days a week do you work out? You're like, well, I don't know, five or six. Oh, God, I, I, don't, I don't have the time for that. Yeah, I know most people don't have the time for it. I'm, I, I, I'm lucky that I, I'm able to do that. Yeah, most people don't have uh, nearly that much time. I, I mean, I look at you, you have kids and a job. It would be really hard for someone like you to work out that much or even do anything probably for yourself. Do you ever get time for yourself? Like you're validating them and you're, you're, you're making them feel understood and heard and they're open. They're remaining open. Remember, you're trying to be effective and you're not effective once they shut those doors. Once they shut those doors, everything you say is going to bounce off. But if they remain open, because here's the reality, you're trying to talk somebody and taking that first step the first step is any step forward, okay? So uh, yeah, five days a week would be a step. It's probably too big of a step. 
Usually it's one or two or mm -hmm. something or anything. So validate their challenges or they ask you like, well, you know, how do you eat? You're like, I actually eat um, only whole natural foods. I feel much better with that. Like, I don't have the time to cook and, you know, you know, I, I buy this processed stuff because it's easy and it's fast and the kids don't like to eat it. Like, yeah, I know it's super hard. My God, I, I can't even imagine how challenging it must be for you to manage um, all that stuff. So, you know, there are some options with uh, processed foods that are a little better. Um, and I know some really good companies if you're interested or something like that, right? So you're validating and you're helping. What you're not doing is making them feel stupid, making them feel stupid for their feelings, which if you do that again, the door's closed. Yeah, stupid or alone, right? I used to teach my trainers to, uh, this was like a stick that I did forever, which was almost anything. So I trained them to do this. Uh, that a client would say like, oh man, I have such a hard time with this or, oh, I, I can't do this. I like, I would tell them to say like almost all my clients, like, yeah, like let them feel like they are normal for having that challenge or feeling like they can't do this or not having enough time, all the excuses, all the challenges, all the things like that. But one of the best ways to validate them is to let them know that, oh yeah, most of my clients have a hard time with that. That's actually what, and then you make them feel secure that you know how to navigate through these waters too. Cause now it's just like, oh cool. I'm not alone. Uh, I feel heard because you validated what I said. And oh, now I feel confident that you might have the answers to solve this because most of your clients have struggled with this also. It's such a powerful way to kind of hit all those. By all. the way, it's true. Yeah. It's not a trick. It's not, I'm not it's, lying. Yeah. You're yeah. the, you're the anomaly. You fitness person or the anomaly, everything that they're saying, all the challenges they have is what most people feel and have. So you, you definitely make them realize like, yeah, you're not an outlier. That is a man. That's I a used tough to, one. I used well, to tell like a doctor who gets somebody who gets diagnosed with something like you get bad news, got an STD, you get some crazy news <laughs> from, a, from a doctor. <laughs> and like, could you imagine like the doctor goes, Oh my God. I yeah, know, yeah. I've never right? seen somebody. First, it goes like this before. It's actually really common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, yeah, yeah. it's not so bad. <laughs> but it's like I used to tell my trainers, it's the same. I've never thing. seen a rash like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm You're like, oh, you color. freak out. Oh. But if your doc, literally, if your doctor, I mean, literally, how they respond to whatever it is that you get diagnosed or told you have, everything from his basic little rash to something crazy like a terrible STD answer, right? Like, no matter what it would be, if the doctor makes you feel like it's very common. And, and he sees it and deals with it all the time, you instantly have this feeling of relief and like, oh, okay, like, well, tell me what do we yeah, do? Yeah. Versus if your doctor went, oh, you know, or I don't know, that's yeah. that's tough. Or just try to, you know what I'm saying? You're yeah. like, it's I a think, shitty feeling. I think sometimes it might feel like work in this situation where it's like, uh, so you mentioned your parents and trying to convince, like same thing with me with my dad. And I already know all of his behaviors. I know what he does. And then, and then, you know, for him to come in and kind of explain the reasoning and, uh, well, I do eat healthy and I do this. And I'm like, in, in the back of my head, I'm like, no, you definitely don't. <laughs> I've seen what you eat, you know? And like, and you want to kind of interject and you're just <clears throat> like, bite, bite your tongue, you yeah. know? Like it's, it, this is, this is an opportunity for them to be vulnerable yeah. and to share with you. And if, if, Again, too, I think the people that are closest to you, that's the hardest because it's like, if you really want to you want infuse them. change, you, you have to allow them to be vulnerable to share, even if like, uh, you, you probably know a little bit more than you should about yeah, Even them. if you know they're lying to themselves. You know, you're lying to themselves. Yeah. They, it, it may even be some, they believe it, you know, in their head, but it's like, you see the action. By the way, we're not telling you to lie. So loving people uh, or caring about them is not lying no, at all. It's just compassion. It's compassion yeah. and it's, and it's just effective. So like, let's say you have a family member and, uh, that they just got put on another blood pressure medication and their poor health and they smoke a lot. They smoke cigarettes, right? So real obvious, unhealthy thing. And then they come to you and they ask you some health and fitness stuff. And you say, well, you know, we know probably an easy, what well, probably one of the big steps you could do is, is, is quit smoking, you know, cause they came and asked you, right? You're the example. And then they say something like, well, yeah, I did cut uh, the amount of cigarettes I smoked by a third. Now the fitness fanatic in you or whatever it might be like, stop smoking everything. Like, okay, fine. Yeah. You went from smoking three packs to two packs. Good job. But instead what you should do is say that, and this Celebrate. is true. This is true. Yes, mm -hmm. that is a very good step in the right direction. Yeah. That's awesome. Get or, excited for him. Yeah, yeah, or man, you know, I, I got to- Progress. You know, yeah, or God, I really got to fix my eating. You know what I do now is now instead of drinking regular Coke, I have Diet Coke, you know, or something like that. Instead of being like, well, you know, you should just drink water. Like, actually, you know, that's, that is less calories. That is a, a direct, that is moving in the right direction. Or, you know, hey, you know, I used to skip breakfast. 
now I have a bagel in the morning, right? Okay, not the best choice. But rather than saying that, you say, yeah, I could see that's that's definitely a, a good step in the right direction. Now you're trying to fuel yourself in the morning. And then what happens, not every time, but sometimes is it opens up further conversation. Oh, okay. Well, right. is the bagel a good choice in the morning? Well, I mean, what are you looking for? Because there might be some better choices versus right out the gates. Oh, you have a bagel in the morning? That's not good. That's going to spike your blood sugar and your insulin is going to crash. You know, and they're, they're, they're not going to listen to you anymore. So I know we're trying to con we're trying to convince family and friends to do this, but that's actually just great advice for all coaches and trainers. Like that's how you should communicate to your clients. When Always, you're yeah. All clients is to anytime they make a point to tell you that they're making a decision that they think is better for their health, even if it's technically not. Commend the decision. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, at least they're, the, 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 you want to commend the effort that they're putting forth to do that and celebrate that if you shoot it down and and correct it like oh that's not good yeah. or you shouldn't do that like a bagel that's a terrible decision for that well that was better than them fucking eating fruit loops that they were eating before you <laughs> know what i'm saying like it's better than that and it's moving in the right direction and so you got to celebrate that otherwise what will happen which most people most people that are in that situation all of us for that matter that came to the gym for the first time are insecure and so you already kind of have this wall up and you're already a little defensive and you're already less likely to really be vulnerable and open up and share really all the things that you struggle with. And so if the first thing that you say that you're doing good, you get shut down, like you're going to, they're going to put that wall up and now you're never going to get. Yeah. To I it. remember being at a dinner with people that I had just met because they were, uh, uh, the coworkers of, uh, you know, at the time my wife, and I remember them passing the bread around. And I said, no, thanks. And, if, and, and, you know, the comments start right away. And I didn't make a big deal about it. I said, oh, yeah, no, thanks. I said, you don't want to eat bread? Yeah. And, I, yeah. and then I, and I, and I remember, no, no, I, I, I mean. It's well, like no, an alarm goes off. Yes, I know. And I, it, it, you know, kind of really affects my stomach. But don't you love bread? Yeah. Bro, are you kidding me? Bread's delicious. Like, I'm validating all of it rather than be like, well, you know, I don't like it as much as my health. My health is more important. <laughs> okay. Now, there's the preachy guy that everybody was looking for. All right. The, this, the, this next one is uh, a another very effective, very effective strategy for a few different reasons. Earlier, we talked about inviting people to come work out with you and create a good experience. Here's a good one for nutrition. Invite them over to cook a meal with mm. you. And don't make it, you're going to come over and we're going to cook this super low calorie healthy meal or this <laughs> low carb. Don't say that. You plan it and you make it healthy, but that's not what we're talking about. You're just coming over and we're going to cook it together and then let them make the comments like, wow, that's a lot of vegetables that you're cutting up. And where'd you get this meat from? And wow, I like the way you prepared that. You used coconut milk instead of, you know, whatever. I see you using olive oil versus a seed oil. Like, why are you using that? And then you make it, you have fun mm. together, you connect. It's a great experience. And then you eat the meal together. The, by the way, one of the side effects of this that I absolutely loved was that a lot of people, and this is just today, it's modern times, a lot of us equate cooking to it takes time, it's work, and it's hard. And as a result, most of us never really cook meals with our family, our kids, and our spouses. And we forgot that it's actually a fun bonding experience. It really is. Like one of my favorite things to do if I want to hang out with my kids is we cook a meal together and we do all of it together and we play music and it's this wonderful experience. And when you do this with somebody and you're making a healthy meal, they start to see it and they start to be like, I actually enjoy doing this. Like maybe I'll take some time aside to start cooking for myself. So I, I actually love this strategy and I actually love this strategy for a similar reason, but I like to go in the direction of like, I'm going to cook a big old fatty ribeye steak and a cream of mushroom spinach. They're going to see me saute the onions and olive oil. I'm going to have butter on my, and I'm going to let them see these things that they're like, wait a second. You I thought that was unhealthy. Yes. Yeah. Cause then that opens the door for me to like educate on like, no, these, uh, you could absolutely enjoy a great steak like this and a meal like this. This is not what puts all that excess weight and make people unhealthy at all. And then you have an opportunity to educate that eating healthy is not as bad as what people make it. It's it's I know it's uh presented as tilapia and asparagus yeah. all day long, but that's not work. that's not how most of us eat. And there's a way for you to actually have really good foods and yet stay in in a in a real caloric balance to where you can lose weight or be in shape. And so I like going that direction where they see like a meal that's like really good and just it doesn't register for them that like this is something that you could eat. Yeah, we made a huge impact on um, uh, my mother-in-law this way. She <clears throat> came, she would come and stay with us because she's out of state. 
And, you know, she's just with us. So because she's with us, she's eating with what we eat and we cook together. And she would make comments like that. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you guys eat, you guys eat like mm -hmm. fatty lamb and oh, wow, you put olive oil on everything. I thought that was high calorie and whatever. And we're like, no, and, you know, and I'll answer some questions. And then she's eating, she's like, oh my God, it's really delicious. And I feel really good. And then it turned into, I love coming here because when I eat with you guys, I feel so good. And then it turned into her implementing this. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like it, I've noticed that too. My mom, the same thing. We've been able to kind of influence like subtly with that and like have them involved and bring them over and cook the meals with us. And then you start to see that now when we go over there, there'll be like a dish that's specific. Look what I made. You remember this? And and they remember those, those times that they put it all together. And too, it just brings that connection back to, um, to the foods. And, and I love, I love actually like taking, especially with the kids, like uh, we'll, we'll have, we have a garden outside too, and we'll have them kind of cut off like some, some carrots, some tomatoes and some things that were naturally kind of growing there too. So it's just like, it, it, it builds that association further is like, Oh, this is our food. This is our vegetables that we have and, and grown in the garden too. So, you know, there's, there's cool ways to kind of bring that back in and, and realize that where the food actually comes from. Yeah. And I can't, I can't stress this enough. People are always looking for something to do with each other or how do I connect with my teenage kids or how do I get my wife? We're going to hang out, but I want to talk, we're going to do something healthy or my husband or whatever, cooking, preparing a meal, like prepping, cooking, eating, cleaning together while playing music, having good conversation, hanging out is actually one of the funnest things you could possibly do. It's so enjoyable that I look forward to doing it with my kids. I connect with them while we're doing it. We have a good time. It's not a chore. It's not crazy work. It's great. We're all connecting together. And in the meanwhile, what's, what's happening in the background is you're, I'm making some influence. I'm influencing them with some healthy choices and they're eating things they haven't eaten before. And they see what the prep looks like and it becomes something that they start uh, to value. All right. Lastly, this one is also effective, but don't hammer this one too much, but inject it here and there, which is talk about your challenges around fitness. Now, if you do this one too obvious, it's, it's like, what are you doing? Why are you telling me about all how hard <clears throat> this is for you so much? But it could be literally something like, um, Hey, what'd you do this morning? Oh man, I did not want to work out today. Sometimes I just have those days where I do not want to go to the gym, but I got up and I went anyway. So I did that. And then I, you know, I went to work and this happened. So what you're doing is you're showing you're human and that you also sometimes don't want to work out or you also sometimes want to make that whatever food choice or whatever. So it's good to show people that you're human, just like, just like they are. So I love this one. I think it's extremely important. I, I think the way this looks like for me is, and I, and whether you intentionally wrote them in this order or not, but it's in this order where it's like, I'm being the example first. I'm inviting them to do these things like that. I'm like, I'm going to do the cooking and things like I'm. And then when finally they are, they're asking questions, this is how I start. Yeah. So they're finally like, so, you know, what is it? And then I go like, well, man, I tell you, it's, it's a challenge for me too. I, I, I'm tempted to do this. And there's mornings where I don't want to get like, I'm going to start with letting them know that I'm not invincible. I'm human too. And so that's my first start to like the beginning of me starting to educate, starting to help, starting to get them to move along <coughs> is actually admitting how hard this is for me. That's how I want to start that conversation. I don't even need to say nothing to them on my day to day until they ask. Once they ask and I get to this point, because I've done all the steps before, I lead with that vulnerability of sharing my challenges, my struggles, where I've had pitfalls, what I've learned from my mistakes and how I'm still learning today to humanize me and then let them know that like, I too know what it's like to struggle like yeah. that and hopefully together but, we'll figure this by out. By the way, this is the opposite of what our tendency tends to be. Our tendency tends to be, we want to present yeah. this flawless, yeah, our best perfect- self image like wow you work out five days a week like isn't that hard no man i wake up this is like what i do man like i love it i feel i feel fit it feels amazing I'm just, i look forward to it every day all you're doing is making yourself less and less relatable <laughs> relatable to yeah. this person like, i feel nothing like that yeah oh well no wonder you work out all the time you yeah. just love it so much or they'll say something like god how do you eat healthy all the time yeah. well i love the way it you makes me feel genetics in fact i crave broccoli I crave vegetables. It's like all I want to eat. When I look at a donut, like I just know how it makes me feel. And I, I get Versus the it. opposite with that is like, man, for a long time, I struggled with vegetables. I hated vegetables. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
I did not want to eat them. I didn't like them. I couldn't figure out why. And then you educate them on why and how you found out why you didn't like that. And then how you change that behavior versus saying, oh, I love vegetables. Yeah. I just like eating them all the time. Listen, there's nothing more unrelatable than somebody who does something that you think is hard, but then you, they, you, you, they make you believe it's easy for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now it's like, well, yeah, of course, you know, that's not a problem for you, right? Of course, yeah. that's not an issue for you. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't break the law, not because you're afraid of, you, you know, you, you just, you just, that's just what you do. And you're just afraid to get arrested, but not because you have all these temptations like I do or whatever. Or, oh, you eat healthy. That's because you think unhealthy food is gross. So of course you're going to do that way. But what about someone like me who loves unhealthy food? I have no idea right, right. what that's like type of deal. So talk about your challenges, humanize yourself. By the way, for trainers, one of the most effective things you could do is this right here. What we're talking about right here. Took me a little while to learn this. But when I was able to present my challenges to my client, then my advice became 10 times more effective. It was not effective when they saw me as this 19-year-old fitness fanatic who has all the time in the world, who just loves working out, and he just he's lucky because he got to do this for a living, and, and that's that. When they viewed me like that, my advice was kind of like, well, okay, mm -hmm. we'll see how that applies to me. But when I talked about my insecurities, and I, God, I thought I was so skinny, and I developed this bad relationship, and it made me not feel so good, and you know, I, you know, and I, I'm really challenged in these areas with nutrition. Like I could get obsessive. Then they were like, okay, okay, he did it, and uh, I can hear that he had some challenges, so maybe I can do it too. Um, look, if you like the show. First off, share this with friends and family. Let them know you care about them. Also, get our free fitness guides. We got a lot of free fitness guides that cost nothing. Go to mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram, mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram, mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. <laughs>